Good morning, everyone. Welcome back into North Dakota today. Shane Belkowich has been a practitioner of Frederick Scott Archer's 1851 wet plate photography process for over a decade, and he joins us this morning via Zoom to talk about the unique process of this 170-year-old photography practice. Good morning, Shane. Thanks for having me on, Sophia. I appreciate it. Yes. Well, welcome back. We love having you on the show. Yeah, it's kind of you. Thank you so much. Yes, of course. So for anyone who is unfamiliar, what is the process of weight plate photography? I'm uh, using a 170-year-old photographic process to capture people's images in silver, um, pure silver. And uh, when you make an image out of pure silver, it's completely archival, and that image will... Um, not degrade at all over time. So a thousand years from now, the images that I'm making here in my natural light studio will will exist in this and look the same as they did the day I made them. Wow, that's pretty unique then, huh? Yeah, there's there's less than a thousand of us in the world that are actually practicing this this old technique. So it's uh, it's fantastic to be here um, in North Dakota and to uh, I've got people coming in from all over the country and people in from all over the world to. Uh, to uh, have their portrait taken in my studio and it's 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 rather fantastic so wow yes and scrolling through those photos we can see your work is really beautiful thank you thank you i've got a uh, this thursday at gallery 522 downtown bismarck i've got um, 36 of my framed limited edition uh, carbon ink prints uh, available. We're doing a fundraiser for the American Indian College Fund. So it's called Northern Plains Native Americans A Modern Wet Plate Perspective. Um, I'm on a 15 year journey to photograph a thousand Native Americans in this process. Um, as of last Friday, uh, I had made 781 images for that series. Um, there's a series of books that um, I'm producing. I just finished proofreading volume three. So volume one is sold out. Volume two is about to be sold out. Volume three is, should be coming out in the next couple of months. And the idea is uh, over a thousand portraits producing four books to document the, the indigenous culture here in our state. Well, that is certainly an amazing project. And speaking of your books, I have one right here mm -hmm. and I got a chance to flip through it before we came to air. This is truly so amazing. And the photos in here are beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad it's there with you. Yes. So what really inspired you to start this project? Um, I had never had any Native American um, acquaintances or friends or anything to speak of. And on this fateful day, uh, back in 2015, Ernie LaPointe, the great grandson of Sitting Bull, walked into my studio. And so that was my first Native American portrait. And it just, uh, it went from there. Um, the State Historical Society, where I've got some plates, um, I've got over 900 original plates with them right now. Um, they had asked me to maybe do a little series and um, it was going to be 10 plates. And then I said, but there's no way I'm going to find 10 Native Americans to trust me. And then we got to 50 and then I got to 100. And then I just said, well, let's just see what we can do here. And I, I knew that I was pushing myself out about over a decade to get a thousand Native American portraits. And that's uh, that's where I find myself. Uh, Dakota Goodhouse from United Tribes Technical College is my second portrait, and it just snowballed from there. It's all word of mouth. Uh, uh, people come in from all over the country to partake in in the series and and to see this historic, very important photographic process uh, come to life. What does that mean to you that people travel from all over to come get their photograph taken? Well, when I first started, it's a little surreal. When I first started, it was just my family because I didn't, I didn't have it. Nobody knew what I was doing. I was just doing things in a back warehouse. So uh, it was just a slow, um, slow process of people just started coming and, and kept coming. And I have an open door policy at my studio. I think that helped greatly. Uh, anyone can come in and anyone shows up. Um, I booked out about seven months for my Friday sessions. And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's a remarkable thing. Um, to feel uh, trusted uh, by people and for people to travel. I just had um, some people in last uh, last weekend from Canada. They drove, you know, 15 hours one way to come and have the portrait <laughs> stake right. my in my studio. Well, wonderful. Well, you mentioned your fundraiser. How can people find more details about that? Yeah, so um, at Gallery 522 on, um, on Thursday from 4 to 6 o'clock, um, there will be, uh, I'll give a little talk at 5 p.m. in Dakota Goodhouse. Uh, I had mentioned him. He's going to be doing some uh, Native American uh, flute music. And um, we're just going to hang some prints on the wall and uh, see if we can raise some funds for a very, very good cause, the American Indian College Fund. 
That certainly is a wonderful cause. How can people find your books and then more information about you? Yeah, if you can go, if you could just go to Google and type in Balkowitch, B-A-L-K-O-W-I-T-S-C-H, wet plate, you're going to find a myriad of different articles and stuff about my work and my website. But you could also go to www.nostalgicblastwetplatestudio.com. The book is available out there. I've got some prints also available out there. And um, yeah, so online, I, I've got a large presence. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram and so forth. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's a pleasure, Sophia. Thanks for all that you do. Yes, of course. All right, everyone stick around. We have more North Dakota today coming right up after this break.